Welcome biologists and today we are looking at specification point A taken from the respiration topic for A-level biology for OCR A and this is we are looking today here at the need for cellular respiration and some examples of particular reasons as to why certain organisms need to do respiration. So this is the overall equation for respiration, which you should know from GCSE. Shouldn't be too much of a shock that one to the system, but I am going to move on to have a look a little bit more about how we form ATP throughout this process of respiration. Uh, and again, you should have um, looked at this when we did nucleic acids back in AS, but it's just a bit of a recap. So we should know that we have an adenine base with a ribose pentose sugar. So it's most similar to RNA nucleotides. These ATP, T stands for tri, so adenosine triphosphate, that's got three phosphate groups. And then ADP has got two phosphate groups, adenosine di phosphate. As you can see here, my ATP is hydrolyzed into ADP by the addition of water. All hydrolysis reactions have the addition of water. And then we have our inorganic phosphate and our energy. And that we can form our ATP again through condensation reactions with the, um, to make water um, by the removal of water from an ADP. Um, so it's worth bearing that in mind throughout the respiration topic where we get ATP made at substrate level phosphorylation, but also through chemiosmosis, which we'll learn about as we go through. If you wanted to, in a bit more detail, here are ATP and ADP in a bit more detail. If you're interested as to where that water comes from and where it's added into, you can find out that here. Okay, so we've had a quick look at the components involved within respiration, the basic components. Um, what we need to do now is have a look at some named metabolic reactions. So here we have some definitions that we need to be aware of. We need to be aware that energy cannot be created or destroyed. They can only be converted from one form to another. And um, ATP, we've just gone through this one. Anabolic and catabolic reactions. So anabolic reactions, these are reactions in the body that make larger molecules from smaller ones and catabolic reactions break down larger molecules into smaller ones. So we've covered a couple of metabolic reactions there uh, in that table of definitions. What we're now going to do is have a look at some examples. It is worth knowing that there aren't a lot of exam questions on this at all. I have very rarely seen this in the MART scheme to do with on the OCR exams. However, this next bit is very popular, which is why we've got a red box which contains mark scheme answers. Some processes that require ATP, it might be worth pausing the video and having a think of these before you do move on. But we should be aware of active transport. We should have met that quite a lot. Maintaining rest of potential in neurons, you've met this in neuronal control. Muscle contraction, again, you've met this in plant and animal responses. Cell division and growth, you met this in mitosis and cell division. And Basically, most metabolic reactions involve and require ATP. It's involved in an awful lot of reactions. It's really important here that we, when you're talking about ATP, you're not just saying reactions, you're saying metabolic reactions to get that marking point. So why do different organisms need to respire? So in mammals, for example, respiration is required to generate heat, which you looked at in thermal regulation to do with communication homeostasis. We've got respiration in plants as well. So plants don't only do photosynthesis, they also do respiration. Don't forget plants can only do photosynthesis where there is light present. So quite often plants switch to respiration at night time to generate ATP for things like mass transport and translocation. Have a look back to transporting plants if you want to recap that one. We've also got respiration being really important in bacteria because we need uh, ATP for mitosis or asexual reproduction within the bacteria as well. So there we are, we've covered that specification point. Um, good luck with your exams, guys. Please, please, please remember, do not use the words it, they, amount or size. You've got to use good scientific terminology in order to get those marking points.